Hi guys, thanks for visiting my channel Free Your Finance. My name's Gary and I talk all about financial independence. If you'd like to see more videos like today's one, please hit the subscribe button below. So for any of you that have watched my last video, you'll know that I've started a new mini series interviewing lots of people all on the journey towards financial independence. Today I have my second guest on the show, so I hope you enjoy the video. If you'd be interested in being on the show yourselves, please do get in touch. But for now, let's get on with the interview. Today I have Rosie joining me. I met her on a London FI chat. Uh, we've chatted a few times now virtually. Hopefully soon we'll be able to get back to a pub and actually meet. But she's kindly agreed to join the channel today. So Rosie, do you mind doing a little bit of an introduction about yourself, please? Yes, hello, I am Rosie. Originally from Brighton, but now live in London. I, my bit of my background, I guess, I'm a qualified mental health nurse, qualified personal trainer. Um, and now in sales, previously with a bit, a bit of recruitment as well. Um, uh, my background isn't actually, isn't from money. So it's all sort of self-taught, everything that I've, I've learnt. Um, family aren't natural investors. So we've always had what we need and it's always worked for our family that way. So all of this is a, a bit of me sort of venturing out into how to become financially independent, really. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Right, so I've thought of a, a few questions. I have to admit, I've already sort of preempted Rosie just so she knows what to expect. But we have a few <laughs> questions to go through and, and learn all about her and, and her journey towards financial independence. So first question, when did you discover financial independence? So, um, as I said, I, I'm not naturally from an investing family. So we have never really had a lot of money. We've had what we, we've needed, which is, is fine. And I've loved living, living that way. But I've always had big dreams as a young kid. So uh, I did a ski season in my early 20s. Uh, and I was a chalet host. So, you know, doing, sort of doing all the cooking and cleaning and stuff like that. So I did it with me and one other, uh, which was amazing. So my dream was to own my own chalet and have my own catering business in the Alps or wherever it was. I did mine in, in Austria. So that was one of the dreams. And another one being a mental health nurse or having been a mental health nurse and a personal trainer, I wanted to open up a gym that was open to mental health rehab clients. So both of those big dreams required a lot of money. Um, so that sort of sparked the, how do, I, how do I get more money? Or how do I get money in the first place? I didn't know how to. In 2015, there was also a moment my um, godmum uh, bought me my Australia ticket. I went to Australia for a year because I couldn't afford it. So uh, I was in a position where I was like, I want to be in a position where one, I can afford it for myself <laughs> <laughs> and to be able to do it for someone else one day, sort of pay, pay that back. So then I started to earn money. I found the sales job. So in commission, what you put in is what you get out. So I was getting sort of more money from, from the commission sides, a bit of a grafter. So when I, and then I realized I've really like money so, <laughs> so then how do I get more of it um so then I started sort of looking into YouTube videos and how to become a millionaire in five days and things like that and then I came across the the fire movement so um I was like right okay this is how people start to get their big cars and big houses and go on their fancy holidays which isn't always the case is it with FI no. it's usually no. the quiet ones that earn the most money <laughs> or no. have the most money so yeah, that's that's how I came across uh, FI to start with. That's really cool. And what I did sort of think while you were speaking is you've come from one quite expensive area of living to a, another quite expensive area of living. <laughs> so it must be yeah. quite tough in that respect. Maybe maybe one day you can dream of living up in Scotland or somewhere where... That's it, yeah, I might get better, better value for money. <laughs> uh, where, whereabouts in uh, Australia did you travel to? Did you go all over or...? I started in um, in Melbourne and then travelled up the east coast, then Incredible. came back down. And so I spent majority of the time in Melbourne, but did all the you know the travelly stuff yeah. in the yeah. camper. Amazing. Right. So so next question: What were you like before you discovered FI? So I've always been careful with money. I've always had to pay my way, which I I love the fact that was my life. Like I didn't want I. I wouldn't have wanted it to be handed on a plate for me because um, that's how I've learned all my sort of my mistakes and how I've got to, to where I am, I guess. So when I was at uni, I was doing my full time mental health course, which is 40 hours a week all, all throughout uni. Oh. Um, and they give you a bursary, which is great, uh, but it only pays your rent and you aren't able to apply for loans on top of it. So all of the extra expenditure, mainly drinking. 
um, had to come from somewhere else. <laughs> so I got a full time job as well. Um, so I was working like 85 plus hours a week to earn my, earn my way. Um, wow. And my parents always offered, they always offered to help, but it, there's always been part of me that wants to prove a point. So yeah. <laughs> I was like, I can do this without any help. Yeah. Um, so I had to be frugal then. So my like, my breakfast was Marmite on toast. My lunch was Marmite sandwich. And then I bought 49p lasagnas uh, seven days a week. So my <laughs> Weekly expenditure for food was four pound fifty, and it was eighteen pounds a month. And I was going into banks, and I was constantly getting charged for being in my overdraft. Like it was just a downhill spiral yeah, at uni. Of course, of course. Um, so yeah, I was very frugal in, in that respect, and and also so Australia. Um, obviously, my godmum bought me the ticket, but when I went out, I'd maxed out my overdrafts, maxed out uh, my credit card, so I had zero money. I don't know what I thought I was doing. Um, I'd only booked one week of accommodation in Melbourne, so when I got out there, I was like, well. I have, to, I have to do something so um, I saw a work work for accommodation poster um, so I started work for accommodation so that was sort of obviously that that had my accommodation they would give me a drink after every shift so that helped yeah you know, <laughs> so I had to start the evening uh, people bought you drinks because you work behind the bar you, if you're friends with a chef they'll, buy, they'll give you hot dogs um, I made friends with a travel agent so my east coast trip was heavily discounted she's still a very good friend of mine now <laughs> um, and I got a second job and so I was, people would bet how long they thought I'd last going up the east coast they're like oh you'll be back in a week and for me I'm like yeah all right watch me yeah. <laughs> um and then on the east coast I was finding out ways that I could earn money so I don't know if you've heard like when you go traveling there's things like jelly wrestling and mud wrestling and things like that I haven't. Um, so I was doing them sober to win the money so it was 200 dollars if you win everyone else was smashed because it's like a laugh and I'm like I'm gonna win that <laughs> I'm gonna get my 200 dollars and yeah. pay for my <laughs> pay my way but um yeah so I was living off noodles and goon so goon is bagged wine if anyone has ever heard of it and it's uh -huh. great as a pillow too you blow it up <laughs> into a pillow so it work, works with that as well so yeah it's always been frugal um on a day-to-day -day respect so when I came back to the UK I just carried on living like that because oh, that's all I knew so I was like shopping I would buy the hazelnut spread instead of Nutella even if, if I even had that <laughs> so uh, and I can eat the most bland foods, hence the noodles, I guess. Um, <laughs> but then when I started earning commission from recruitment, I wasn't spending it. So I was just saving. But then when I started getting the monthly commission checks, I was like, oh, I'll treat myself. I've worked this hard. So I'm, I'm great on a day to day, but spontaneous buy for me. Like you said in your last video with, with um, the guy the other day, you had your PlayStation chair. Mm. I bought a moped last week. It's cheap. Oh, it's a cheap okay. moped. I've never had expensive cars or expensive like those. They've always been second hand. I bought a Vespa just because I was like, wow, so cool. I can get one. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm awful for big buys, but on a day to day is always is always good. It's really great what you said with regards to, I did mention this in the last video, but as I started earning more, I noticed that I started developing like a lifestyle creep. You know, as I was earning more, I was, I was automatically going out and spending more. So it's really great that you held that sort of, um, I don't know the right word, but I suppose the, the power to, to, to stay frugal and, and not live beyond your means anyway, you know, as you're receiving yeah. those commission checks. I think there's, there's an element of like a click, isn't there? There was a part where I was like, oh, living up to the Joneses and having the branded stuff and mm -hmm. like buying the most expensive, I'm obsessed with trainers, but like buying the most expensive trainers because it looks good and you'll look good to your friends and you, you want your friends to know that you're earning money and you're like, you're, you're living well. Yeah. But then that part disappeared quite quickly as well because I was like clothes don't mean anything to me like it's, it, it shouldn't I shouldn't be spending like a hundred pounds on a jumper and things like that I was like if I put that somewhere else or into investing or something then I would end up with you know with more money in the long run so that yeah. did I did have an element of that but it it did disappear quite quickly at the same time and also yeah. I've now kept those clothes so I'll just I just keep wearing them um, right, so the next question, when you sort of just first discovered the actual sort of FI movement, what were the main changes you, you made to your life that you feel really helped? So, well, one carried on being frugal, obviously, but the main thing, the first thing I did was planned out all my finances. So as I sat down, because obviously with, with commission, your monthly intake isn't always the same, but you mm. have an idea of what your average will be. Mm. I 
put everything down and what I've put into our, our joint account and my like paying for bills and stuff. I, I laid all of that out, worked out exactly what I was spending, what I needed to spend. That there was things like we both have, me and my partner both have Netflix accounts and we both had Spotify accounts and it's just zero point. You're paying yeah, double. Sure. So it's just small things like that that I sorted straight away. But like that was like cut that the bills. So Martin Lewis, huge huge fan like everyone is I guess but like taking tips from him of comparing your energy bills and things like that you can save a lot like I got my mum and dad to watch um one of his money saving expert things that he does his live ones and they worked out that they would in the next year they'll save over a grand just from changing their bills and they have no they had no problem with the bills they were paying but yeah. it's now saved yeah. them more money yeah so did that straight off um I started listening to podcasts and watching YouTube videos and I don't read but I read finance books or how yeah, yeah, things can help so that made a big difference um and, and joining the London FI group that we're both part of even though I've only been to three now just talking to people like that has made a huge impact just asking questions because before I'd be trying to figure out my own mm. like oh how do stocks and shares work or mm. I wonder what it's like in the property world and things like that but just asking has <laughs> made a huge impact yeah um so yeah there was that and then it's the trying to increase like multiple income streams so obviously I'm a PT so I've, I've been doing a bit more online stuff now and sort of you know doing training plans and things like that um I've, I've dipped into match betting like I know you have yeah still coming yeah. to grips with that slightly but I it's good it is good yeah, <laughs> um and got an eBay account that I bought load of stock 50% cheaper than it was retail price and selling on for slightly more and which is actually a lot more effort than it than it's worth in a way <laughs> yeah, no, I can imagine. um so yeah I used to do mystery dining that was a lot of fun um, I've signed up for now I've got my moped I instantly went on to delivery oh, <laughs> I'm cool. going to apply to be a driver yeah, take, take <laughs> most of your spare time definitely main changes is just, just talking to people mainly yeah. um, and, and yeah. the spreadsheets like I, yeah. I, I don't touch them as much as, as I did when I first started out because once I think it's about it's forming habits isn't it um, mm-hmm. knowing that you're on your cheapest rates at the moment and making sure you revisit it every 6 to 12 months what I was going to go back to is is what you said about your parents like knocking off that thousand pack. It's just like it's madness when you think about it, isn't it? That I know you said they were they were comfortable with their bills anyway, but that's that's just a grand that they're spending for for no reason. It could it could even even if you don't save it, even if you put it towards a holiday. I yeah. probably would treat myself because yeah. like I say, like every, every day I'm I'm trying to find a cheaper price for in shops, but it sounds like I think I've made myself sound like I'm like oh like digging into the backs of the like into the office section and things like that it is just simple day-to-day changes that I think I've just formed over habit over time yeah um like going to Sainsbury's and they always put the expensive stuff at the front don't they or at the top straight in your eye line and then if you look a couple of shelves down there's usually something else that tastes just as good and it's slightly cheaper (laughs) I'm I'm completely on your side when I think how hard I work to earn that money I don't know why I used to be so happy to then just give it away you know like (laughs) Right, so next question that I have for you. What are your main methods of investing right now? Yeah, so um, I started investing in um, stocks and shares at the beginning of the year, timely. Um, so <laughs> I put some money in, um, into sort of in, into funds and into, I've, I think I've made a couple of mistakes there, putting into single investments of, I can't even remember what it was, but it was some sort of property, but it was a single one. And um, I've been money down since since then. But I mean, with COVID and things like that, well, that on its own, um, everything's taking a drop at the moment. But sure. um, so yeah, that that's one side. I bought my apartment in London, so purposely bought it in SW9 with an SW19 postcode. Even though it's just slightly out of Wimbledon High Street, it's still got the SW19 postcode, which is really attractive. And near works that are going on nearby, so they're stripping down all of the old buildings and building new apartments and a new school and stuff. So that's purely for investment at the moment. Um, absolutely love it here, but um, the idea is to try and you know sell it on for more and you know get get better. Um, value for money in a future property cool. I've got money in sort of a savings accounts that have high interest you know the savings accounts that um, will be locked in for a year and you get mm-hmm. a higher amount but yeah in forms of actively investing that's it at the moment but I've been researching sort of buy to let like we spoke about in our FI yeah. group um, and or sort of buying a property abroad and doing holiday rentals yeah. or um, my camper van that I'm converting 
renting that out. So that's a form of investment in my head at the moment. <laughs> that's something I'm really looking forward to finding more about. I think that's my later question on my list. But going back yeah. to your um, your funds that you're investing in, is that something you've just put a one-off investment in so far or, or are you sort of monthly investing? How, how are you going into that right now? Monthly investing. So um, lots of tips. You have a video on it. Yeah. Um, lots of tips and tricks just to consistently um, still put money in every month. It will grow in the future, whether it's five years, 10 years, or if you have sort of money coming in, the dividends and things like that, I, I continuously um, invest month on month. And I, I really wish, the, one of my advice later, but I will say it now as well, is in, I wish I'd invested earlier. Yeah, always. me too. I had mentioned on the channel loads of times before, but I put all, all of my money I was earning through my 20s went into buy to let And as much yeah. as they've been a fantastic investment for me, I wish I had found the index funds earlier. Um, just because yeah. they're just so simple, aren't they? You know, it's a month. You can set it up as a regular investment going out, and you forget about it. And uh, yeah. in the last ten years, we would have made quite a bit of money instead. That's it. Yeah, that's yeah. it. The fear for me, or why I didn't invest earlier, was purely because it seemed scary. Like it was, mm. it, you can end up. Like, people have loads of money in it now, and um, I've got a fair share of my savings in there. Mm. And the thought of putting your money somewhere that you're so unsure about. But I'm naturally a bit of a risk taker anyway. So I'm very much like, I'll put my money in there. If it fails, I've learned my mistake. But it's not no. usually the best way to invest. Yeah. <laughs> but I am a high risk taker. But it was that fear of not knowing what to do. But then you go onto YouTube channels and you learn and just keep Googling, keep yeah. researching and you finally start to click. And yeah. then if things do go wrong, like it's not going to be a huge loss, really depending, depending, yeah. <laughs> depending on what you do. But just putting in starting off at like what you say is it 64 pounds a month that like, it, it will make a difference like it's yeah. way you get way more back than you do in a savings yeah. account and it's just like when you think about when you're sort of 17 18 years old you could spend 64 pound very easily just going <laughs> so, down the park, couldn't yeah, you? Yes, so easy in yeah. a round <laughs> yeah next question this is actually your idea of a question so i'm really looking forward to hearing oh. your answer what is your biggest financial mistake so Obviously, being a little bit early on in my financial independence career, career, um, my yeah. biggest money mistake, and it was only recently that I finally managed to get rid of it, is buying a BMW that I did not need. Honestly, like I buy all of it outright because I, I'm like finance is, is fine, but I'd rather not owe the money. So it only cost me. I say only cost, it's cost me £1,600, 1650 for this BMW. It was an old school car. I love old school. Like my, the moped I bought is a Vespa. Um, it was an E45 or E46. It's one of the cars that my dad had. Yeah. And it had, <laughs> this is such a me thing to do. It had my number plate. So it was, it had R051. And one of my goals when I was younger was to own a personalized number plate with my name on it. So I was like, well, I'll just spend the money. I have the money to spend. So splashed out on this car on eBay. All right, he must have been some dodgy dealer. Like the <laughs> car just kept falling apart. And I was like, I need to get rid of this car. Um, so I've been trying to sell it, trying to sell it. No one wanted it. But for the price that I was, I tried to put it up matched because I only had it for like six months in London. I don't even really need a car in London. Yeah. Sure. Um, so I was trying to sell it and it wouldn't sell that. So I put it in my parents' house near Gatwick. Then COVID hit. So obviously that uh, no one was coming to view it because, you know, contact. Then it got to, right, I was like, just get, just drive it off a cliff. Like, I don't want it anymore. It's, I'm paying for the yeah. tax on it. Like I was just throwing money away on it. I think I was still paying insurance up until like two months before I sold it. And that was just a stupid, that, that was my fault. Like I shouldn't have been paying that. Yeah. Um, so finally managed to get rid of it, but it cost me, they, I charged them £500 just to get rid of it. The amount of money, I don't even want to work out how much money I lost keeping that yeah. car. Like, yeah. It was ridiculous. The insurance, yeah. I, didn't even, I didn't even research the insurance before I bought it, and that on its own was £80 a month. I think I asked for that question purely so I could just rant about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you got it off your chest. I'm glad for your Thank finances. You. Thank you for being here. It's, uh, expanded its wings, you know, to be here for things. Right, so next question. What are the main changes you are yet to make that you would still like to make towards your journey towards FI? I think a lot, like I don't think it's ever really over. 
Um, mm. But it's just figuring out different ways to invest and trying to make money work for me. So minimal effort, maximum return, basically. Mm. Whether that's sort of buying the properties abroad or doing the buy to let or the camper that I'm doing, like there's a lot of changes or and ideas to move forward it's just finding out what works for me and what i am willing to put time into but yeah it's just different income streams for me will be the, the bigger changes and uh, and property for me is is a big one like i want to get a second property and with the stamp duty at the moment they stopped the stamp duty until 31st of march i think it is yeah so i'm trying to i'm i'm going to try and jump on that so yeah I, I want to sort of like like you i guess um own multiple properties and whether that's for me, my family, or for an investment buy to let. Yeah, no, I think I think you can't go wrong with property personally. If you did ever do this uh, property abroad, I think it's a really amazing time right now with things like Airbnb and stuff. I think the yeah. opportunity cost on it is unreal. That's the idea with the camper. Because I was googling, I wanted to because we went when I went to Australia we were in a camper for three months, and um, then I went with a best mate to France in a camper, and I was like, I need to invest in this because I, I love it. It's a good hobby, but also the return on it. If I, I was googling how much campers were for a weekend and one you have to book it for a minimum of three nights yeah and it worked out like 400 pounds just for the three for three nights and i was like well i'll jump on that <laughs> yeah. so next question is the one i think most excited to hear all about i know we've kept mentioning it but it's finally coming <laughs> out please can you tell me more all about the camper van i know you've mentioned quite a bit yeah so well well the idea like i said came from when i've spent, done some holidays in camper vans um and then when i came when i was earning my money and i hadn't put my money anywhere i was like well i can i can buy something that's worth investing in so i just bought a van just <laughs> spontaneous van buying on ebay um and it actually worked out quite well it's a it's a volkswagen but it's a transporter so it's quite tall i can stand up in it which, and i'm five foot eight so it's just an old one it was part converted at the time and i was like oh that'd be easier that it surely if it's already partly done i don't really have to do much more then remembered that you have to in insulate a van so you <laughs> had to strip everything out that they had already done um so it's been a huge work in progress but you know what? i've absolutely loved it like i've loved learning i don't know anything about diy like literally <laughs> nothing and i stood in this van and i was like where do i start and yes. my the first thing i wanted to do was call my dad and i was like i'm not doing it this is the whole trying to prove a point thing like I can do this on my own I'm, I'm a strong independent woman but yeah from the start the idea is, was to to rent it out so to get an income from it like I said with when I when you google how much camp van is for a weekend you can end up if you if you continuously rented it out every weekend it's a it's a large sum that, that can yeah. come in and my parents live in Gatwick so I was like perfect I'll just leave it there <laughs> I don't think I've actually asked them yet but so yeah the idea was to people to land in Gatwick I will, or my parents will drop it off. They'll go to Cornwall or wherever they yeah. want to go. They drop it back, leave keys in the, like, the little compartment thing. And then that's it, job done, easy. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so there, there's that idea, but also like there could be a chance in the future to live in it, like yeah. depending on how well I actually do. Yeah. Um, and if I can install the showers and things like that, um, it is a hugely, I know people that, that have, that are doing it at the moment, they're mm -hmm. living in their camper van and renting out their London property. So if you think like, what are you paying for to sleep in a camper? You can, you can street, like it isn't illegal to, to street camp. I know people that have lived on campsites for like six months and yeah. they have the, the running water, the electricity, yeah. if you're happy to live in a confined space. But that's the beauty about converting the camper yourself is that you can choose where you want stuff. Yeah. Like it's optimized the small space so you can have like a pull-out table to eat from and um, the cupboards you can have the, the like the clever trickery to, to be able to fit more in and, and things like that and you can build the bed the size you want I've built the bed way bigger than I probably should have because <laughs> that's my time it really does make you think you know the, the, the opportunity cost like imagine what you could get rental income for your property in, in London I, I know <laughs> you've got a full-time wage while you're while you're traveling around the world in your camper van like, that that's sounds it. like a pretty good agreement to me personally yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> even converting the van you kept like there are expensive parts like wood is super expensive yeah um, which was a surprise to me and who knew there were so many different screws but um <laughs> finding things like what someone in uh, the apartment next door threw out a kitchen unit which saved me a lot of money to, to install a kitchen unit. i was like are you using that i'm just gonna can i take that <laughs> so finding things frugally to, to convert the camper has been fun as well like yeah. just pieces of wood that wicks have thrown out and that's been that's been fun
Yeah, definitely. No, it's, it sounds awesome. And I promise you, I'm not jumping on your bandwagon. It's something I'd love to do one day too. Uh, yeah, everyone sounds, wants sounds, to do it. <laughs> it sounds epic. So we're on to the, the final question, unfortunately, which is what are three tips you would give your younger self knowing what you know right now? First one, we mentioned it earlier, is invest early. So just, just get your money into, into stocks and shares. It, it, even if you don't have necessarily that much at the moment, even if you only can put in 30 to 50 pounds, just continuously do it and it grows over time. Yeah. Um, I wish I'd done that a lot earlier. Research. So I did start researching relatively early, but go like looking at YouTube channels if you don't understand something. Or mm -hmm. I used to um, listen to those YouTube channels, How to Become a Millionaire. Like I think I said it earlier, How to Become a Millionaire in yeah. a Year or whatever so yeah we read books ask questions talk to people that have already done it like the, the again the london fi group um there's people on a journey that have just started up to people that are financially free like it, they've yeah. already done it ask them the questions yeah. like they would have gone through stuff that is similar the similar thoughts that you're going through mm. um which is why i find your youtube great because people will learn from it and get advice from from you and, and because you've done you've done some stuff so <laughs> and you from have to say that by the way <laughs> but it's it's yeah. sweet of you but you didn't have to say that. <laughs> but it's true like youtube is a huge thing for me Definitely. Um, and the third one is use your skills for, for it as an income stream. Like yeah. some people are naturally creative and don't realize they, they think it like it's fun for them. So it shouldn't cost people to pay for it, but people will pay for it. So my partner is an extremely talented artist. Like she does, she paints jackets and things like that. And she finds it fun. So she's like, well, I don't have to charge much for it because yeah. I enjoy it. But that's an income stream that you can oh. use like my personal training like writing plans for people that's an income stream but i enjoy doing it so i've been doing zoom workouts for my mates and my uh, family for free like tuesdays and thursdays because i enjoy it but then i, I could have charged them but i actually I genuinely do really enjoy doing that yeah. um i like watching people in pain no, but that, <laughs> that, that is an income stream as well whether you like walking dogs like you can you can charge people for walking their dogs yeah so yeah so use your skills for money is, is, the, is the third one. I've just got one more final question leading on from those. Uh, what would you say the top resources apart from YouTube? Are there any particular books or particular podcasts that you've really enjoyed listening to or, or reading? I listen to uh, Bigger Money Pockets. So they, they're American, but they talk a lot about um, investing and also about rental properties. So really... Mm -hmm. Well, I call it real estate it is real estate but mm -hmm. um flipping houses so i loved listening to them i have read uh, rich dad poor dad um mm -hmm. i loved that that just sort of taught me the mindset um it's great actually it's a great book youtube i just sort of was just youtubing it how to, to understand things so that i was youtubing a lot about investing mm -hmm. but yeah i think that's all all my main resources yeah. and um yeah. and joining groups yeah, like that, yeah, to chat about yeah. people with similar mindsets. I'm part of the Self Build Camper Group, um, and I didn't really expect anything of it. And I asked one question. I think it was like, "What's the best insulation?" or something like that. And within literally five seconds, I had like 20 comments. I was like, "Bloody hell!" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was easy. Yeah. So then I started doing that for, for, for like following other other questions, like other yeah. other groups for similar questions. Yeah, people people love speaking about what they're passionate about. You know, for the exact reason we're sitting here today talking about this. You know, people want to help because they've been in that position before and it wouldn't have necessarily had those resources or have these resources Definitely. that they have now. So they, they don't want people to go through the, the strain that they've been through. So they're more than happy to help. I agree completely. I, I think there's so much information out there that we can get now. We're quite lucky really when you think about things like YouTube and even like just how simple you can Google and it gives you the most accurate answer. But yeah, yeah. I, was, I was just going to say thank you so much for giving up your time. Um, I really enjoyed speaking to you. I was really glad when you agreed that you'd come on because I was super excited to find out all about the camper. Maybe <laughs> one day I'll rent it off you when I'm, when I'm rich enough to afford it. And, uh, <laughs> I think it sounds like a really epic journey and I look forward to hopefully seeing it in the flesh one day, maybe. Yes, absolutely. Cool. Take care, Rosie. Thank you so much, Gary. See you later.